Hey everybody, welcome to an episode of The Daily D. Today's topic is buyers versus sellers. So in order for us to be better at selling, we must think like buyers. You know, the, the only time that money changes hand in a transaction is when a problem is solved. But seldom do sellers, people who are in sales, think about their buyers you see i was thinking about this just yesterday and this morning uh, as as i really tried to analyze why it is that people struggle with making a sale like for an example i own an insurance business and insurance we try to get customers to purchase an insurance product let's say it's an auto insurance policy and let's say that this person comes in and maybe is interested in a quote or maybe we're calling cold calling or warm calling somebody and asking them if we can give them a quote try to save them some money you see there there's the challenge right there you see i think that the problem is that they need to save money but what if that's not their problem right what if their problem isn't about saving money have we ever thought of that see that's really the challenge that many people believe that their problems or the problem that they're solving when they're selling something is the problem that they think exists what if that's not the problem now, here's, here's a good way to think about it, right? See, if we just approached it from trying to figure out what the buyer wants, or we'll call it discovery, we'll be better salespeople. For an example, why would I just try to quote somebody a cheap insurance product when I don't know anything about their driving history or their driving habits? Let's say not history, let's say their habits. Let's, re let's, re let's replace that, right? So for an example, why wouldn't I ask, you know, sir, before I give you an insurance quote, can you tell me how many miles you drive on a weekly basis? How about a monthly basis? What if I asked, can you tell me uh, a little bit about what you drive for? Do you drive to and from work, go to school, pick up the kids? Maybe. By the way, if they don't understand, or not understand rather, if they don't know how many miles they drive, that's good. Why is it good? Because now you can help calculate it. Okay, so let's let's Google map this thing. <laughs> how many miles from your work, or home to your work? How many miles from your work to the school? How many miles from the school to, you just Google it, right? Now, will this impact, to be honest with you, will it impact the quote? Maybe, probably not, but maybe. But what does it do? It's helping to discover a problem and show that you're the expert, right? You can't, you can't solve a problem for somebody if they don't know they have a problem. And, and if, even if they didn't have a problem, your expertise is what's going to sell them. You see, you, can't, you have to think like the buyer. What does the buyer want to hear? The buyer wants to hear that you care, that you're not just trying to sell. The buyer wants to know that you understand what you're doing. The buyer doesn't, think, doesn't want to think that they're just being sold a product they don't need. So what if I told you that your driving habits can, can, can impact your monthly premium? Huh. Let's find out, right? What if, what if I asked, before I said, do you want roadside or towing? What if I said, have you ever had a flat before? Instead, before I even asked those questions, right? Have you ever had a flat before and didn't have somebody to help you? Right? Has your car ever broken down and you needed to call somebody to come give you a jump start or maybe give you some gas? <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? And if that is the case, then see, maybe you need roadside and towing assistance. Good morning. See, how, how am I phrasing this? I'm trying to be the buyer now, right? I'm trying to figure out what the buyer's needs are. I'm not just trying to sell a product or service they don't need. I'm thinking like the buyer, putting myself in a position of authority. I'm using discovery. See, if I was in life insurance, right? Let's talk about life insurance. And I'm using these as examples because I'm in this business, right? But if I was selling life insurance, I wouldn't just say, are you covered? <laughs> That's not it, right? Right? You don't, you don't want to... By the way, if somebody gives you the opportunity to even talk to him about life insurance, you shouldn't just say, have you planned for your death? <laughs> no. You, you can ask questions like, in the event that something un, unforeseen would happen or occur, right? Would your family be covered? Would they be protected? And this customer says, what's that mean? What do you mean? Well, would you... You know, on average, just to be clear, look, here's a stat, right? On average, you should at least leave three years of your annual salary to your family at least three years after paying off all your debt 
at least three years plus your debt on average? Is that a good question? Is that a good statement? So do you have coverage that covers you? Because that was a good comeback, by the way, not a comeback. This is a good statement for somebody who has health, life insurance already. Hey, I understand you have life insurance. Did you know that when you have life insurance, you should at least have three years of your annual salary plus all your debt in life insurance just, just to cover your family in case anything happened? No, I didn't know that. Let's evaluate what you got, right? Did you know you could put your children on your policy just to make sure um, that they get covered in this thing too? You see, I'm trying to think like the buyer. Do you know anybody who's passed away that didn't have money to bury? Uh, didn't They didn't have money to bury? You see how I'm asking and, and asking questions so I can discover what the real problem is because me just saying, hey, life insurance is 13 bucks a month. You want some? <laughs> right? A roof, right? Anything. I'm looking around. I'm like, car. You don't sell a car because a car. By the way, some products kind of sell themselves when the buyer is really excited because people buy what they want, not what they need most days. But when you are trying to sell anything, you have to think like the buyer. You have to have intent, right? Your intent intentions have to be good. Your content, which is what you know about your products and services, has to be on point. You have to present a few stats. You have to talk about what it is that you provide, not just a product or service. You provide a solution to a problem that they didn't even know they had. And if they knew they had it, you're the best person equipped to give it, give them the solution. See, buyers and sellers, you gotta stop, you gotta stop thinking like a seller and start thinking like a buyer. What would a buyer want to hear? What would the buyer want to go through? And if you put yourself in that position, what happens is people buy from you because of your intent, because of your content, because you did the right things. You see, that's how it works in sales today. It's not about who can convince who to do what. It's about who can help the most people. You can do this. If you're in sales today, which everybody is, you can replace whatever I just said about your boss and just say, you know, boss, what's the problem? How can I help? What are the solutions? Right? Probe, question, discover, solve. You can do it, guys. All right. I wish you nothing but health, wealth, success, but most importantly, freedom. You guys have a great day.